Is your small business growing? That's the question we address right here on the Grow Your Biz Show. This is a place where I interview strategic entrepreneurs who can help you to grow your business with, through inspiration and information. Hi, I'm Paul Madsen, host of the program, and this is episode number 59. Episode 59, Shauna, and I am very thrilled today to be able to bring with you uh, Shauna Dorsey. I've been chasing her for a long time to get her on the program, and finally we made the dates work. And uh, Shauna, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. I'm happy to have you here, and uh, like I said, it's uh, been a long time coming, but we finally made it happen. So Shauna is a consultant in the Omaha area with talent development. I will let her tell you more of what that means. And um, if I'll just jump right in. Shauna, yeah. let's, let's talk about what benefits do you provide in the marketplace? Yeah, so uh, currently in my consulting role, I'm really focused on helping employees get more out of their engagements with employers outside of what they're bringing to the bottom line. So that's primarily what I'm doing. So there's lots of culture work, okay. lots of community engagement work, and I'm doing that in partnership with some other firms and individuals. So as an independent consultant, mm -hmm. you bring uh, engagement, so to speak, I love the word, yeah. uh, to employers to help them. What, what do they get out of that? What, what does a more engaged workforce mean for mm -hmm. an employer? So um, I'll give you a little bit of background. So the market for tech talent particularly is pretty tight. And we all know that. You Lots know. of technology challenges <laughs> hiring people. I've, done, yes. I've been in that market, yes, it's right. very tight. And so um, one of the things that employers can do is find ways to set themselves apart from their competition. And that could look like, uh, one example of a way it could look is to have a more engaged workforce that feels connected to the mission of the organization outside okay. of their profit goals and revenue goals. So Okay, yeah. well I understand mm -hmm. that because uh, it, as you say, the marketplace is red hot and mm -hmm. so if people uh, dangle more money out there, sometimes they, they, they'll go unless they have what? Unless they have more mm -hmm. they engagement more or reason to stay, yeah. stay put. So, mm -hmm. Well, we're getting a little ahead of ourselves, but because um, I wanted to ask you, why are you in this, this business? Why mm -hmm. do you provide those benefits? Yeah, so I've been working in this space for about what is this, 2018 now, right? Yeah, okay. I think so, I'm, uh, <laughs> so, I'm not sure. I, I can't remember. <laughs> yeah, so officially in this space for a little over four years. Okay. Um, so four years ago, uh, and some change, I started Interface Web School with a few partners. Right. And at that time, um, I didn't know anybody in the tech space, in the startup world, wow. I had no clue. Like Just four years ago? It? Yeah, And no you're clue. so plugged in now, in four years you did all this. Well, you know, it's, it was a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, a lot of hustle, all right. A lot of hustle, um, but a lot of it was just connecting with the right people and finding out um, what the resources were in the community to uh, connect my students at the time right. with employment opportunities um, and to connect our school with nonprofits who needed some web development work. So we did a lot of that over the three years. Okay. But through developing all of those connections and understanding what some of the opportunities were, uh, that helped me realize that community engagement is just such an important thing. It, it's um, a passion of mine and something I care deeply about because it really has, um, it really changed the way that our students experienced Interface, for example, okay. because they felt really connected to the community through some of the nonprofits we worked with. Okay, well, let me go deeper. What mm -hmm. What is your driver for that? I mean, I understand the vehicles you used, mm -hmm. and, but why Why does Shauna yeah. do those things? Why, what's behind all that? What are your motives? Right. That's a great question. <laughs> I just... That's why <laughs> I ask it. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I know it doesn't make a lot of sense to people because they're like, why do you care so much about this? And I know that's not what you're saying, but I do get that question a bit. Quite I'm not a bit. with that tone, no. Yeah, that's true. Not with that <laughs> why tone. Why do you care? <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's just so cool to me to, um, to help people see that they all can play a part in making our community better for everybody else. And okay. that you don't have to show up with a million dollars to make, to move the needle. You, as an individual, can make a big difference in this community just by finding things that you truly care about. And so okay. that's kind of the driver for me because I found several of those, those organizations, for example, Girls Rock is one that mm -hmm. I care a lot about. I love what they're doing. And um, mm -hmm. it, it, this, it's a really small organization, but it's changing the lives of hundreds of girls and their families. That's pretty cool. Be so, sure to remind me to talk about that a little later. Here. Sure. So all this deep commitment to the community and to helping the people engage, mm -hmm. um, does some of that come out of a personal history or personal background where mm -hmm. you had mentors along the way? 
Um, not necessarily mentors, but what I've what I've noticed in my career and personal life is that the more um, I felt connected to the community, like through these nonprofits and individuals, the more connected I felt to Omaha. Okay. And I'm someone who's thought of leaving many, many times, <laughs> as many of us have. I actually, Especially with the weather we have currently. <laughs> yes, yeah, yes. And um, I left uh, for a couple of years in my early 20s, but okay. came back and honestly, like the connections have made it so that I want to stay. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah you're, you're deeply rooted. Yeah, <laughs> yes. They're deeply rooted. So you're mm -hmm. inspired. Your why is just you care about the community. Yeah. You came back, and I can mm -hmm. certainly appreciate that. So, right. well, Shauna, as a talent development consultant, I mean, there's, there, you throw a rock and hit a, a, hit a consultant out <laughs> yes. there. Everybody's a consultant, right? I'm a consultant, too. Right. Um, what separates you from the rest of the herd? What mm -hmm. differentiates Shauna mm -hmm. from other consultants and other other people trying to do similar things to sure. you. Sure, and I know this is going to sound like a repeat of the answers I've given. Okay, but well, it truly we're just fine tuning. Is, here yeah. Go, yeah, it truly <laughs> is um, my uh, connections and commitments to the community that makes a big difference, and that I'm a really um, I try to build intentional or close relationships with a lot of the executive directors of nonprofits that I work with and like really understand what they're working on and what they care about so that when I come across opportunities to connect them with um, another nonprofit that's working on a similar uh, program or has a similar initiative underway, that we can say, how can we get more done together and faster versus creating a, another thing that sounds very similar to something else that yeah. somebody's already working on. Well, so, I love your perspective on that mm -hmm. because it's a big picture. Mm -hmm. I mean, if someone says, I want to do this, or we should do that, or why isn't there this? You're connected enough. Is connectedness one of your Gallup strengths? Or? No. No, it's not. unbelievable. <laughs> Cause well, it's in there somewhere, but not one my one of the most button. connected people I've seen out there. How many, <laughs> how many Facebook friends and how many yeah. LinkedIn friends do you have? Right, I see. I don't really even count those anymore yeah, because yeah. like- um, there's, there's too many. <laughs> there's too many, and there's like a lot of these fake accounts out there anymore. Oh, so, okay, you yeah, know. I never thought of that. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. So numbers are deceiving that way. Mm -hmm. but be, Shauna in the real real world is uh, is very connected, and yeah. I think that's a great answer because when I think of you know who's the most connected person in Omaha, I think of you probably oh. because, and so uh, if that totally differentiates you, uh, mm -hmm. um, she told me that when she was in a um, career transition situation, um, people contacted you. Is that how it worked? Mm -hmm. Somewhat. Yeah. They reached out to you and said, hey, now that you're a free agent, uh, mm -hmm. can you help us? Yes. Awesome. Well, um, let's back up then. Again, we started, covered a little bit of this ground, but mm -hmm. how did you get to where you are now? I mean, tell us some of the early years and how yeah. you got started. Okay, so um, I'm going to go back to just high school and give the short version okay. as we go. We okay. only have 26 minutes. Yeah. That's right, <laughs> yes. So um, I went to Omaha North High, mm -hmm. okay. and that's uh, kind of where I really got a, a really, um, sorry, a stronger jump start into technology. So okay, good. great school. Good. Um, I was there in the 90s and we had computer labs and everything. So it was awesome. great. Really? Wow. Yeah. And then um, at UNO, um, I started to get a little bit more involved, but not really. I have never been a great student. That just never was my thing. <laughs> but I love, okay. you know, networking and people. And, and other things, yeah. Yeah. yeah right. And all that good <clears throat> stuff. So studied uh, management information systems at UNO in undergrad and grad school. Okay. So the big pivot point for me was in um, grad school. My final course was a capstone course where we had to work on a real project for, um, I'm sorry, a project for a real company in town. Right. So our group worked on a, um, a project for Project Harmony, which okay. helps kids who are victims of, of um, assault or, okay. you know, some sort of abuse. Okay. You know, really um, terrible things. But sure. what our group did was we built... Um, and I'm really giving a high-level version of what this was, no, I, you're, you're but right. it was like I a know. private YouTube, basically, okay. uh, for Project Harmony to share videos with um, whoever, whatever agencies needed them. So it would be an interview of the kid talking about whatever experience they had. Oh, okay. But then the kid only had to tell the story one time to one person, which oh, is that's, great that's for, smart. Yeah. for the child. And then yeah. the um, the video itself was protected behind this in this system, which right, right. was great yeah, too. It's not for public use. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Or not on DVDs and things like that. Right. You know? Okay. Um, so we delivered that project and it was hugely impactful for me because our team, and I was not a programmer on this team, I was the project manager, okay. but our team built something from scratch, from the ground up. We went from a blank slate to a, um, an application that uh, 
is, could potentially transform the lives of the kids and, and partners that Project Harmony worked with. Okay. And so that was like a point in time where I said, now I gotta figure out how to make this sort of um, high impact experience a part of my normal life, my normal work life. Okay. And so that's pretty much what I've been working on for the last, I guess, eight years. I was 2010. Yeah. So yeah. just getting to a point where I, can, I feel like that community engagement piece is always there and that I'm empowering and making empowering people and making things better as much as I can all the time. Sure. I am not perfect at this. You know, it kind of goes back to your why also. I mean, yeah. it, that is kind of your why. You you had a project which was impactful on some lives that were damaged mm -hmm. and uh, you made a difference. And I like your, what, say your question or your thought again, how can I make this my life's work or yeah. something like that? Is that what you said? Yeah, pretty much. Like how can how can I get paid to take to make lives better basically? Yeah. You yeah. know, and so, but through technology because that's really sure. the, the foundation of it all. So what happened after grad school or after college? What was next? Yeah, after grad school, I went on to, uh, goodness, I've now got to think back. <laughs> okay. <resume>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. So no, after grad school, I, um, I was working at Gavilon at the time, uh, Gavilon, the trading company. Mm -hmm. And so um, I was working on their help desk. I was like probably the oldest intern they've had, <laughs> or at that time anyway, I was like 28. Okay. Um, but I was an intern there working on the help desk and then over the course of four years worked into a um, project management type of role okay. and also taught myself SharePoint on the site. Ah, a um, technology tool of SharePoint. Yes, okay. yeah. yeah. And so I was building um, small applications for some of the traders to make okay. some of their uh, manual processes more, wow. automate some of their manual sure. processes. So and this is a big company with big mm -hmm. tools and, yeah. and you, you found a little niche to say, yeah this could be better if you try this. Right, so it's like instead of Excel or paper, what if we throw it in SharePoint and oh, you can wow. share okay. these, share some fields with your customers, sure. you know, something like that. And you like just add the mind that mm -hmm. is solution oriented. Yeah. Yes, I love problem solving, Yeah. Okay. totally. <laughs> um, so then um, after that, I went on to um, Sojeti for a year. So okay. I went to Sojeti as a SharePoint consultant. This, that's of course a private uh, contracting mm -hmm. company, the IT consulting, and, yeah. and they, they choose high level people and yeah. good quality talent out there. So thank you. Um, they, that's a compliment to you that mm -hmm. you landed at that company. Yes. And what did you do for them? Uh, for a year, I did some uh, SharePoint <coughs> consulting, some project management and a few other uh, projects while I was there. And I would just as a side note, I would highly recommend that any person like graduating from college, especially in IT, consider going into consulting uh -huh. because it's a great way to have one employer. So in my case, it was Sojeti but to work on many different projects with many different companies. Yeah, that's, you know? that's nice. You get to yeah. see, instead of we'll go to work for one company for, mm -hmm. who knows, 20 years or right. 10 years or even five years, mm -hmm. you get to see one company's problems over and right. over. Whereas that's great advice, I think, mm -hmm. is that you get to go to, as a consultant, you're going out to several different clients right. and companies, and therefore you're getting some experience with that and mm -hmm. seeing a chance to solve it. It's not failing, but they're, in the entrepreneurial world, they often say something like, uh, fail faster. Yes. And so you're not mm -hmm. failing, but you're getting faster experience with a variety yeah. of employers, right? Uh, yeah, absolutely. And it does give you a chance to grow professionally, for sure, because you do get those ex those experiences that may not have gone perfectly well, mm -hmm. but you can right. take them back and um, apply those learnings to your next gig. It's um, really really sure. great that way. Sure, you get to uh, put up more fires. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Experience fire person environment. Absolutely. Uh, so yeah, I did that for a year and then started Interface School with my partners. This is what I really want to drill down on because mm -hmm. that's fascinating. Uh, at, at you had been a consultant in a larger global IT consulting mm -hmm. company and um, you wanted to launch your own thing. I mean, what was the I, what, no. motivation behind this? I really didn't. I didn't want to launch my own thing. I kind of, <laughs> I, I was approached the by... Reluctant Entrepreneur. I think there's a book title here. Yeah. The Reluctant Entrepreneur. I <laughs> definitely was. I was kind of like, it sounded so scary to me, but um, my future partners um, approached me about this and they were like, you know, we think that you would be a good person to run this company. And I was like, really? I have no background in this space. Like I went to school yeah. for um, management information systems, right. but I wasn't a programmer. Right. I was a project manager. You understood the industry though. Yeah, I understood the industry. Yeah, especially um, after working in it. Yeah. yeah, that's true. And they liked your communication skills. Yeah, yeah. They didn't yeah. want you to teach Java necessarily. No, like that would have been a huge fail. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then yeah. They, they, they yeah. weren't hiring you for that. Exactly. You know. Um, so eventually I decided to quit my job. It took me a couple months to get to that point where I was like, okay, I'm going to quit and take this huge leap of faith yeah, yeah. on this deal. Because you were a participant in the, mm -hmm. in the company and not yes. just an employee. That's right, right. So, so we all started it together. Skin in the game, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Yes, yes. So we all, yeah, I quit my job and we all met and like formed the LLC and did uh, all this <laughs> launching stuff and then um, <laughs> launching stuff. Launching I stuff, it. yeah. Yes. And I remember like um, in I quit my job in December 2013. We launched the school in January 2013, 2014. Okay, okay. And then. <clears throat> In March of 2014, we ran our first class. And what did they teach? I mean, the, yeah, the first ahead. class was a Ruby on Rails developer course. Ruby on Rails. Okay. Yeah, so it was 10 weeks, 10 weeks, 200 hours. Okay. Uh, we, they students met every day for uh, four hours a day. Mm. That math works. <coughs> yeah. How, so, how did you recruit students? Uh, so we did um, some press release sort of stuff okay. on, you know, in the World Herald. Um, a lot of me just meeting with people and talking about it and Again, all of that. Again, the connectedness part there. And yes. Creating connections. They, they knew that about you probably when they brought right. you in. Right. I did not have any connections back then. Oh, you didn't? No, Even no. after, oh, because at Gavilon, you were there for four years, heads down heads probably down. there. Mm -hmm. And then well so Jetty helped the company, a little bit. But yeah, that would help yeah. some. But yeah, so that's when you started getting out there yes. in the community more. Like I had to. And yeah. it was like... It was tough for me. Like I wasn't yeah. even really on Facebook prior to 2014. Okay. So I had a, a Facebook page, I guess, but I never really posted. Right. I didn't get it. Right. Um, but eventually Facebook became like the tool of choice for interface for storytelling. Okay. And really um, sharing stories about the outcomes. And well, tell me about that. I mean, mm -hmm. you, you chose to market yourself with stories, storytelling. I mean, what's a, what's a story you would use, you mm -hmm. would craft in order to get business, I guess, get students. Right. Um, in our first year, there was a, a young woman who went through our program who um, was working as a barista, for example. Okay. So she was working as a Perfect. barista. Yeah. I was taking the Java, I'm sorry, the Ruby on Rails course in Lincoln through Interface. You really said barista and Java in the same sentence. Oh, hilarious. <laughs> and I didn't get that. <laughs> No. Java That's language, so not Java coffee. Uh, yeah. I'm, anyway, sorry to, sorry, no, I got funny. you off the Ruby on Rails bad joke. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> terrible interview. No, okay. okay. So, <laughs> so yeah, you had a barista come f to the school. Yeah. So a little bit on the backstory is that I was um, taking the Ruby on Rails class in Lincoln because I was like, I probably should know what it's like to be a student okay. at, to sell these of courses. The stuff, yeah. You know, right? And so I, I took the class in Lincoln, and I was like really tired. So I was running the school recruiting and also taking a really intense course. Wow, yeah, it's a lot that is time. intense course, yeah. And so um, I went into Starbucks one morning, sorry, not Starbucks, some coffee shop. A coffee shop. <laughs> yeah, and uh, met her, and she was like, you seem really stressed out today. I used to see her all the time. And I was like, I am, but um, huh. by the way, we're recruiting for this class. So I'm still yeah. always selling. <laughs> and so uh, we had a class where um, First National Bank had um, agreed to send 10 people through training from the community oh. at no cost. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah, so we great? worked out a deal with them. Wow. That was really awesome. And so she applied for that course, got into it took the 10-week course and then graduated and landed a job with a small ad tech company in town. Awesome. Which was great. And so she um, was a mother of uh, three or four kids. I can't remember. I'm sorry, but a s small growing Enough, family. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Growing family. Mm -hmm. And um, this actually just completely transformed her life. Well, you literally did. You changed mm -hmm. lives. And I think your partners and you, when you formed this venture, I, you probably had that kind of outcome in in the back of your mind that this is what we hope to do because right. it's not a traditional university or mm -hmm. MBA program or anything like that. It's right. a program which allows you to go out there and, and I think that's great at First National Bank to sponsor right. uh, enrollments like that. How long did the courses last? How are they? Uh, that was, uh, at that time they were uh, 10 weeks and um, okay. that course was like a half day but then they had mm -hmm. an internship on the other half of the day. Sure. Mm -hmm. it, tell me about the iteration of the school as it went along. I yeah. mean, what, um, you started with the Ruby on Rails. Did yep. you add any other course content in we there? Did. What else uh, did they grow with? Yeah, so we started with Ruby on Rails, and then um, due to the market's demands, we switched to jo to .NET and then Java. Okay. Yeah. And then just started adding uh, workshops and shorter courses, and then also completely changing the model to where we had um, in a foundations course, which is it meets two nights a week now instead of four half days. Okay. Because what we found was that the working professional is really stretch thin already. Oh yeah. And the folks we're trying to reach in many cases have families. Sure. And so for them to go to class four nights a week is really exhausting and it's it's too much. Yeah. yeah. And so we were like, what about two nights and just load make sure that we bring in people with the right aptitude for one. And you didn't know all these answers when you started. We did didn't, you? but well, yeah. That, that, and that's my advice point I guess is that uh, when you start a uh, um, a business, mm -hmm. you don't always know what's gonna come next and so you often iterate as you go along. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, I, 
I, uh, we had Tim Valla from Valla's Pumpkin Patch on last week and talk about iteration. Yeah. I mean, everybody says, oh, Valla's Pumpkin Patch, huge, huge operation, great thing, 30 years, blah, blah, blah. You know, they started as a strawberry patch yeah. and they, people were bending over picking strawberries and they uh, said, well, it hurts my back. Yeah. And, <laughs> and so eventually they listened to their customers mm -hmm and change to pumpkins and the rest is history as they say in your situation you listen to your customers they're stressed they're full even though it's a great idea to yeah. get this high-tech training not everybody also always has that energy that's right and so you you changed mm -hmm. um, tell me about the growth of uh, the interface school and and what happened next mm -hmm. so um, in that first year we trained I want to say 29 people Wow. And then, and I thought that was amazing. I'm like, I can't believe 29 people signed up. That's awesome. <laughs> it was awesome. Yeah. And then um, by the end of the following year, I think we hit like 50 Holy some, cow. 70 something like that. But by the end of the third year before we sold it, we were around 300 graduates. Wow. And that was really powerful. And a lot of it had to do with just being really creative about the different funding options for tuition. So we yeah. had... Um, there was a grant through Department of Labor that we were using. Okay. Um, we had great partnerships with companies like Flywheel and... Um, uh, First Data, First National Bank also did one more class with us, which was awesome. Mm -hmm. So that's awesome. We were just like, how can we have a diverse, diverse set of a training for sure, right. and then also like funding options for people. That was huge. Sure. So yeah, wow. yeah. Well, and then uh, I'm running out of time, so yeah, I'm going to jump quicker. Mm -hmm. No, that's my fault. Um, the uh, the next step of that, it mm -hmm. went over to... Went over to the AIM Institute. Right. So yeah, AIM acquired it in 2017. And then I, I worked with AIM for the first year and a half and resigned um, this Independence Day. And here you are now. And here I am, still Sean doing Dorsey, the same talent thing. talent development. Yeah. Engagement uh, and culture building and all right. that great stuff. Well, um, along the way, I guess, um, all of us have rocks, uh, oh, yeah. we, we bump into the rocks, our head against the wall and so on. I mean, tell us some of the bumps you've had along the way mm -hmm. and uh, what you've learned from them. And, and the third part of the question, what can people who are starting their own businesses, what can people who are launching or thinking about launching, mm -hmm. what have you learned along the way that can help them with getting where they want to be? Yeah, um, I would say my biggest lesson in all of this has been just being okay with failing, number one. That's like huge because then it makes it so that I can try things and not be too concerned about how they work out. Now, the thing is, is that um, I know that I have a high risk tolerance, so I'll say for the <laughs> risk averse, yeah. that it's nice to try pilots that are that won't get you into too much trouble, yeah. you know? So well, and that, that start small. Your really key is to mm -hmm. test, right? Yeah, you absolutely, you have to experiment. Yeah. And like for us, when we saw that, um, for example, Ruby on Rails enrollments weren't going so well over time, we were like, okay, so let's pivot. So maybe this isn't right for this market and we can keep it as an option, but let's add more relevant um, technologies to our okay. offerings, you know? So yeah. just being open to um, trying new things is, is critical. Um, also, take care of yourself. Like burnout is such a real thing. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, ideally as a business owner, you're very busy, but there's also a point where you're, you're too busy to, to take on more work but you cannot support yeah. bringing on more people just yet. So yeah. I remember hitting that point uh, several times. Interesting, yeah. Mm -hmm. Where that's, I just wasn't ready. And that's real important for the situation you have now. You're mm -hmm. independent. Mm -hmm. You can't really be out there marketing for more work when you're doing the work that you have right. because mm -hmm. there's a lot going on. Yes. That makes it pretty tough sometimes. So mm -hmm. any else, uh, else, other advice for wannabe or would-be entrepreneurs to as they launch and go? Anything else? Yeah, I would say start small. Keep your day job if you can. Um, start small. Keep your day job and then um, keep learning and building. Stay connected to this community, um, especially there's lots of, um, not especially, yeah. <laughs> there are lots of people in the same boat as you who want to help and support you. And yeah. also when you see somebody who's doing something similar to you, they are competition, yes, but also you can find ways to collaborate that make both of your situations better. So yeah, yeah. don't be afraid of competition. Well, and Shauna is the, the queen collaborator in Omaha yeah. and so uh, that is great advice right there and you know I like that you're not a comp competitor uh, you're you're a collaborator mm -hmm. and uh, together the right. rising tide lifts all boats right that's right and they say like collaboration is the new competition so oh I like that say yeah. that again collaboration is the new competition awesome awesome <laughs> uh, 20 seconds on Gir Omaha Girls Who Rock. Okay, Omaha Girls Rock. It's an um, amazing organization. 20 seconds. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm like, how can I do this in 20? But no, amazing. They're um, really building our community's future leaders through um, music education and 
collaboration and leadership skills development. It's amazing. How do people find out more about that? Um, OmahaGirlsRock.org. Not org, mm -hmm. not org. And yeah. how do people connect with Shauna Dorsey? I think Facebook or LinkedIn are the best okay. option. So mm -hmm. just find me on LinkedIn or Facebook. Okay, mm -hmm. great. Well, uh, it's been my pleasure to host uh, Shauna Dorsey, the con queen of connected us, Omaha, <laughs> Nebraska, and a uh, woman with a mission who is living out her daily mission on a regular basis. Uh, that's inspirational for all of us. I invite you to visit me at growmedia.com. Growmedia.com will show you the coaching and the seminars that I have coming up. Please check that out. And Shauna, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Great to have you. Yeah. And we'll see you all next time on the Grow Your Biz Show.